Yeah, that I got my hearing aid turned up too loud. <laughs> Ready, set, go. As the old man said, let her in. <laughs> okay. Well, good evening. Uh, it's good to see everyone this evening. Let's get our hymn books if you would. Stan, we'll get started here. We want to sing hymn 123 to start our service. Tell it to Jesus. 123. friend or brother tell it to Jesus alone do the tears flow down your cheeks unbidden tell it to Jesus tell it to Jesus have you sins that two men's eyes are hidden tell it to Jesus alone tell it to Jesus tell it to Jesus he is a friend that's well known a friend or brother tell it to Jesus alone third verse do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow tell it to Jesus tell it to Jesus are you anxious what shall be tomorrow tell it to Jesus alone tell it to Jesus tell it to Jesus he a friend that's well known you have no other such a friend or brother tell it to Jesus alone last verse are you troubled at the thought of dying tell it to Jesus tell it to Jesus for Christ's coming kingdom are you sighing tell it to Jesus alone Jesus, tell it to Jesus, he is a friend that's well known. You have no other such a friend or brother, tell it to Jesus alone. Amen, just tell it to Jesus. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Brother Irwin, would you wear our prayer, please, sir? Amen. Thank you. Be seated, brother. Well, it's good to have you this evening. Oh, we got this back on. Wow. It's good to have you this evening at Bible Baptist Church here in Bridgeport, Texas, and we appreciate you coming out. And it's dark outside already. Amen. The time change occurred this morning, and uh, I guess everybody got it right because nobody came in real, real early this morning except me. But... Uh, couple of quick announcements. First, let me, I, I was supposed to do this this morning, and I apologize to my wife uh, for not doing it. This is to the ladies, sisters in Christ. That's the ladies thing that they do for prayer. It says, I love each and every one of you. I guess if you're not a lady involved in that, they know she don't love you. But uh, I love each and every one of you so much. Uh, you have all added to my life and taught me so much. Your generosity continues to overwhelm me. Each dollar is an act of love and sacrifice, each gift, thoughtfulness, and kindness. Because the bridegroom cometh, Sharon Webster. So I have read it. Amen. Amen. I'm in good shape. Now, a couple of quick announcements, and the main one I've got is a page. 
but I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it as it is given. Pictures are this Monday and Tuesday from 2 to 8.30 p.m. Please double check the schedule in the foyer for your time slot and consult the flyer for helpful information. Arrive on time. Do not arrive early. My wife was going to love that. You will exit the church after viewing your photos. If you are not yet scheduled for portraits, you can sign up in the foyer for a makeup day on December the 11th between 1030 and 5 p.m. Uh, one more note that might go on there as well. If for some reason you can't make the pictures up and don't have a picture for $15, you can still put your picture in that uh, phone directory or in the church directory. Uh, amen. I'm getting through this in a hurry tonight, brother. You're oh, up. you're done. I'm done. All right. <laughs> so we have a makeup day now on the pictures. All right. That was the 11th, you said? December. Of December. Yes. Oh, okay. I think we'll be here, though, Tuesday. <laughs> All right, let's have another song. If you would, stand. We'll sing hymn number 113, Blessed Assurance, and then we'll take up our evening offering. 113. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of right. Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. What a beautiful song. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother David, would you lead us, please? Father, we ask. Thank you this night, Father. Father, we ask you to bless our offering today. <coughs> Father, I just uh, want to ask you to be with the people on our prayer list to guide and direct that, Father. Yes, uh, amen. Bless our to and from up in Brother Kimo tomorrow, Father. And yeah. guide mm -hmm. and direct the rest of the week. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. amen.
All right, before the preacher comes, uh, Brother Keegan is going to sing for us tonight. Uh, I've been looking forward to this where he would play the piano and sing. Uh, so, Brother Keegan, appreciate it. My mic wasn't on, I'm sorry. I'm a soldier bound for glory. I'm a soldier going home. Come and hear me tell my story. All who love the Savior come. I will tell you what induced me in this glorious fight to start. T'was the Savior's loving kindness overcame and won my heart. I'm a soldier bound for glory. I'm a soldier going home. Come and hear me tell my story, all who love the Savior come. I'm a wonder unto many, God alone the change has wrought. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by his help I'm brought. When to death's dark swelling river, like a warrior I shall come. Then I mean to shout salvation and go singing glory home. I love Jesus, hallelujah, I love Jesus, yes I do. I love Jesus, he's my savior, Jesus smiles and loves me too. Tell my story, all who love the Savior come. I'm a soldier bound for glory. I'm a soldier going home. Well, amen. Well, it seems awkward and odd to stand here and think this may be the last time I preach to you. It seems a little strange, and yet opportunity is still mine for at least this service, and I pray that God will use me and allow me to bring something to you that will help you in the days ahead. Amen. Amen. For we are standing, you and I, on the threshold of change. Amen where it seems as though uh, is the normality of life. For the more that we think things stay the same, the more they change. Amen. So I want to invite you to a portion of Scripture that's in Hebrews chapter 12. And I want to start our reading in verse 25. When you found Hebrews 12, if you will stand with me, And we'll read down through verse 29. We'll just read these few verses. 
The Bible says, See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For, for, if he, for they escape not who refused him that spaketh on earth, uh, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I, I uh, shake not the earth only, but also the heaven. And, his, and this word, yet once more, signifieth the, the, mo the removing, I'll get it out, of those things that were shaken. Let me read that verse again, because that's our text. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we, re we receiveth a kingdom which cannot be moved. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Let us uh, have grace whereby we may serve God uh, acceptably uh, with, with uh, reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming love. You may be seated. We are most certainly in a world of change. And with change always comes uncertainty. Not necessarily fear, not necessarily excitement, but uncertainty as things do change. Uh, and it seems as though uh, our, we are living in a world that not only is changed, but is shaken almost daily by that change. Technologies going faster than most of our minds can comprehend. The medical industry, if you just look around us, it's almost, it's almost frightening how quickly things are changing. Amen. Amen? And, and we who are alive today, we know that these things that are happening are just an and evidence of things yet to come. As time unfolds and takes its toll on the world, uh, it's going to change, as according to the Bible says, more and more and more frequently. Amen? And we seem to have no firm foundation on which to stand. Amen? All things that we have in our world today are seen with an expectation of change. Amen? As a leaf is blown in the wind of time, for time does consume the day, and time moves this day into history, and time is that which holds the hope of tomorrow, and the, and the sadness as well. Our world is shaken uh, by, the, by wars and rumors of wars, as which is an indication of God's soon coming. Amen? Our economy, our economical world uh, is as an upheaval of uncertainty, uh, according to the, uh, the things that we're seeing go on around us. The pandemic has changed uh, what we expect in the world. It changed that we don't look forward very far uh, uh, in this day we live because there's no certainty, no boundary, no foundation on which to rest. Amen? Our political realm is shaken daily so that we stand without confidence in the system of our government that once was such a great blessing to this world. Amen? Religion is shaken daily by fallen leaders, by liberalism, by a, a apostasy, wherein the Bible and, and her truths are denied in the name of God. Uh, new Bibles are written daily until uh, the world sets out there and says, if we did desire to find God, wherein would we find Him? And there's an uncertainty of how uh, to relate or how to find God. Amen? Man himself is shaken by the moral decay and failure of the family and the continual onslaught of filth uh, and wickedness that is pumped into our society by wicked men desiring to make a, a profit out of sin. Amen? And the printed page. How blessed we were when the printing press was designed. And today it prints pornography. But if you look around, we have new things. That the, the uh, pornography on the shelf of 7-Eleven that once was such a, uh, a sad thing because of the presence of children. And, and we formed laws that caused them to put that stuff in a brown bag and all that kind of stuff. And, and all that's kind of slipped into the past because now we've got the internet. Where there is no brown bag. Amen? Amen? And we are exposed to the violence and the wickedness of the world all around us. But in this text, in verse 27, God gives us some encouragement. Amen? As He declares, there are some things not shaken. There are some things not subject to time. There's some things not subject uh, to man at all. Right. Amen? Amen? I would stand and say 
to the school system today that teaches our young people that there is nothing certain. There is nothing established. Everything is open to question. And every day that they live, there are new answers found to questions that were asked yesterday. And so uh, there is no certainty. Question everything. I would say to you that God denies that. God's going to tell us in this verse 27 that there are some things that are not given to change. There are some things such as uh, uh, the Bible speaks about our Lord and Savior, and we'll talk about this again in a moment, that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there is no change. Amen? And so as we face these new changes of life, a new history that I'm, or a new chapter I'm going into, not real sure how it's going to work out, a new chapter the church is going into, uh, there has to be some concern, even though we, uh, we understand that God's in control, there has to be some concern about what's going to change, how it's going to be, how it will end. Uh, there is concern. But I'm telling you, in a, in a world of, that changes every day, almost moment by moment, there are some things that you can hold on to that doesn't change. As believers, we have locked ourselves into a great God. By faith, we have a God who rules and reigns in heaven. Yea, can I say more? He is the sustainer of all that is. Amen. He is the creator of the heaven and earth that we dwell in, and it was created for His glory. Amen. And so I would say to you that the Bible tells me in verse 27, uh, it says, And this word yet once more signifieth the, re the removing of those things that are shaken, as the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. In verses 25, he talks about him that speaketh from heaven. I'm telling you who he's talking about is God. Amen. Amen. And so I would offer to you this. The throne on which God sits cannot be moved nor shaken. Amen. Psalms 45, 6 says this. Thou throne, O God, is forever and ever. Lamentations 5, 19. Thou, O Lord, remaineth forever. Thy throne from generation to generation. Amen. In verse 26 of Hebrews 12, uh, the Bible tells us that even the very heavens shall one day be shaken. One day God's going to take this creation and roll it up uh, and, 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 and burn it with fire and bring into existence the eternal heaven and the eternal earth. Know this, until that time occurs, this world is not stable. Amen. God is the creator of the heavens and nothing shall shake him. If you look in Hebrews 1, and you don't need to, I'm going to read it for you. Verse 10 down through 12, listen to what it says. And thou, Lord, uh, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hand. Do you hear that? The heavens, God created them. There was no heaven and earth. There was nothing out there but God when God said, let there be light. And God created all this. Verse 11 says, they shall perish, but thou remainest. And, thy, and they shall wax old as doth a garment. Uh, one of the things that the, uh, the uh, people in the world are telling us now is our world is getting old. Our sun is about, uh, in the possibility of, uh, or in the realm of burning out. That the, that the whole universes are aging. God designed this creation to age. He had a plan for it and a purpose for it and is fulfilling that plan. But the, but the aging of the earth has not changed God one bit on His throne. He's not aged one day for He is the creator of all that you see around you. In verse 12 it says, And as a vesture shall uh, thou fold them up, that's creation, and shall, uh, 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 and shall be changed, or they shall be changed, but thou art the same and, and thy years shall not fail. In other words, God's not part of this this creation, folks. He's the creator of it. Amen. The God that we serve is a great God. Amen. He is all uh, that this world uh, uh, has and all that sustains this world, and He has not changed since the day He spoke and it all came into existence. Amen. When everything else around us is shaken, the throne of God is never shaken. It's a stronghold Amen. of our faith. It is that which we walk or depend upon. It is that which secures us today, tomorrow, and forever. That we have a God that cannot be changed and cannot be removed from His throne. Amen. And no matter how destitute or dast dastardly the change may seem or may appear, God is not affected by change. He is the one who makes changes. 
Amen. When the throne, which is unshaken, is set before us, there are some things that we as believers are secured by faith in. That throne where God will rule and reign and will never, uh, will never change, there's some things. Let me show you a couple of things. In the throne of God, there is established great grace. If you look uh, uh, in the Bible in Hebrews 4.16, it says, Let us come boldly into the throne room of grace. Grace is part of the throne of God. It's part of who God is. It's the foundation or one of the foundations on which God stands. It's one of the things that God chose that He would be. In the Old Testament, in the Genesis, the Bible said when Adam and Eve had tasted of the tree, of the fruit that they should not have, God said, they have become as one of us. To know good and evil. Do you understand that God knows good and evil? God could deal with good and evil because God set Himself upon the foundation of holiness and grace and love of all those things good. Adam could not. When Adam knew the, you understand Adam already knew good. He knew God. And when he ate of that tree, the thing he learned was evil. And he could not in the, in the humanity of that God made him deal with evil. But I find that where God's throne is eternal, so also is God's grace. Amen? Uh, for we have boldness to come into that throne of grace. That grace or that throne also is founded upon mercy. If you read the rest of that verse, it says, And come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy. Amen? We have a great God, and God is love, and God is mercy, and God is forgiveness, and God is, uh, uh, is, is all things good. Amen. And by the way, He's also judgment. Yep. And judgment is good. For judgment vindicates holiness. And when we enter into heaven, I'm telling you, I'm not looking forward to entering into heaven where sin dwells. I'm entering, looking forward to entering into heaven uh, uh, where sin is not at all. Amen. For God has vindicated his, his eternal heaven by judgment. Sin has been dealt with. Amen. What a great God we have. Amen. And sometimes when the, when the foundations of our lives seems to be moving to and fro, we need to just reach out and grab a hold of that sweet throne of God Almighty and hang on. Because it's not going to move. Amen? God's unshakable throne establishes a certainty of God's love. When the Bible says in, in John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved. And we need to go no further to understand who God is. God is love. Throughout the Bible, as we preach this morning, throughout the Bible, and as we taught in Sunday school uh, this morning, throughout the Bible, God demonstrates His great love. His love is part of who He is. His grace, His mercy, His love, His judgment. This is who God is. And it does not change. That helps me a lot. When everything else around me seems to be changing, and most of the time, not for my good. You say, well, I've had a pretty good day. Well, string about 80 of them together and see where you are. Because things are not always good. But my God is. Amen. So that we understand that the throne of God is not, never will be shaken. It has not and will not ever change. I wish I had time to talk to you about the exception. But I don't. Because there's an exception. You know what that exception is? You. You're the exception. Because God allowed you to change. And to walk into His holiness and be presented as His children when you had no right to, to do so. But I don't have time for that, so we'll move on. Secondly, I find, listen to what he says here in verse 27. And this word yet once signifieth the, re the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. And the word. You know one of the things the devil hates? He, like, he hates the word of God. I'm going to tell you this, and, and this may shock you. Who do you suppose outside of God... Who do you suppose outside of Jesus Christ, who according to John chapter 1 is the Word, 
Who do you suppose knows the Bible the best? Jack Van Ippy? You all know who that is? You're kidding. We are old. Who, who in here knows who Jack Van Ippy is? Yeah, a bunch of old buggers. Well, you're not old, Tara. Jack Van Ippy is said to be the walking Bible. If you ever, I don't agree with all his theology, but he does know Scripture. And if you ever listen to him preach, his preaching is just putting Scripture together. Amen? Amen? It's awesome to, to listen to. Who do you suppose knows the Bible better than anybody? Job knew the Bible. I could have known the Bible from cover to cover if all I had was Genesis 1. In the beginning God created. I got it. Who do you suppose knows the Bible better than anybody? The devil does. Amen? And so who do you suppose hates this Bible worse than anybody? The devil does. Amen? And the Bible tells me that there's a couple of things unshaken. Number one, the throne of God is not shaken. Number two, the Word of God is not shaken. The devil hates this Bible, and he has spent thousands of years trying to change it, trying to destroy it, trying to move it aside, and yet the Word of God stands strong. Amen. Amen. The Bible says not one jot nor one tittle shall pass away until it's all been fulfilled. And by the way, you don't read anything about the fulfilling of it, or the, of the complete fulfilling of it, until you get to the last part of Revelation. Yeah. Amen? And then it's not going to pass off into history. It's just going to be removed back to heaven. Hell's going to have no promise of the Word of God. Those that are lost have no second choices. There's no Word, no grace, no love. There's no God present in hell. Yeah. Amen? But this Word is without end. This Word God gave that you and I and every generation before us and every generation without us might know who God is to His fullest revelation to humanity. Now you know this. The Bible doesn't tell us everything about God. Amen? I used to be greatly excited when before I knew God as my Savior, I really enjoyed looking for those things that Christians couldn't answer. That's one of the things that exposed me to the Word of God. And I used to ask them, and you've heard all these things, who'd Adam marry? Well, he married Eve. Oh, really? They're the only two people? And they had two sons, Cain and Abel. That makes four. I read in Genesis that Cain took a wife. Where'd he get her? Huh? His mama. His mama? Yeah, Eve. She's the mother of all living. But those are just things that you, let me tell you something. The Bible don't tell you everything. In fact, what is it, Deuteronomy, that says the secret things belong to the Lord our God? But those things that are revealed belong to us and our children that we may do all the works of this law. Right. Amen? Everything's not taught you. Because you don't need to know. I used to like to ask this question. Where'd you come from? My dad. And my mom. <laughs> Every one of you sitting in here had a beginning. Yep. Where'd God come from? There. God is. Right. Now, when I get to heaven one day, all these unanswered things may be shared with me. I don't know. Amen? But what God intended for humanity to have is between Genesis and Revelation, that we might know who He is, who we are, and how to get saved. And what's going to happen if you don't? So that we can understand that this Bible is important. This Bible is the most important thing that God by His grace has given to man that tells us that whosoever will <clears throat> might be saved. Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord can be saved. If you repent, God will save you. God's been preaching that message since Adam was in the garden. Amen. And it hasn't changed. And hang on to this. It's not going to change. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look like that those people that hate God and hate Jesus and hate the blood and hate uh, all that we stand for, that it might look like they're going to win, but there's always going to be a remnant. Amen. God's Word is indestructible. Amen. Man will try, the devil will try, but God will keep His Word Amen. intact. Amen?
I've always wondered a little bit about, God tells me about heaven. Do you know God tells me more about hell than He does heaven? He tells me about a hell that has the worm that dieth not and the fire that's not quenched. He tells me a hell about a, a hell that uh, is a place of torment, a place without any uh, a satisfying of the, of the bodily function, the rich man thirsted. Amen? Tells me a lot about hell. Doesn't tell me a lot about heaven. It tells me there's a throne. Revelation talks about the white throne judgment. It tells me there are, street, there are streets of gold. It tells me that there's a, a, a crystal sea around the throne. But it doesn't tell me a lot about heaven. I'm having a difficulty in my life. What do I do tomorrow? Where do I go? He's got my keys. I don't have an office. I don't have my books or down yonder. I don't have anything to study for. My tomorrows are in question as to what they're going to be. Amen? But my Bible says, my God careth for me. And what I don't know, He does. And I find my answers to my faith in God's Word because it's alive, it's powerful. Hebrews 4.12 uh, says it's quick. That means it's alive. That it's, that it's able to, uh, uh, to go into the very depths of who we are. And it holds the solutions to our very existence. And the Bible is not shaken because the Bible was not created. It is who God is. John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, 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 was God. Amen. And what you hold in your hand is not a, a, a printed page, it's a living person named God Almighty. Amen. And is held by Him. That's why we as this Baptist church believes in the preservation of God's Word. Amen. We believe we've got something you can, you can believe in and be saved, something you can live with and have success, something you can die with and have peace in your death. We have a Bible that is not shaken. Amen? When we have this Bible, and I've got a lot of references written here about it, and I'll give you one or two. The Bible says in Mark 13, 31, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen? 1 Peter 1, uh, 23 through 25 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. For all flesh, verse 24, is as the grass, and all the glory of men as the flower of the, uh, of the grass. The grass withereth, and the flower, that, uh, that, uh, the flower thereof fadeth away. But the Word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the Word which by the Gospel is preached unto you. And Paul said that word was that Jesus Christ, His death and burial and resurrection will gain you eternal life in heaven. Right. His word is not shaken. And when His word is not shaken, it brings something else to us. It's called promises. Amen. Promises that cannot fail. There are an estimate. Now let me tell you when I tell you there's, there is an estimated I don't know who estimated them. And I found out about people who study the Bible that when you, each one set out on a study, and the study being for the same purpose, for the same subject, for the same presentation, amen? For instance, if I said, I want you to make a presentation on the blood of the Lamb, you might go into Genesis and through the law and make your presentation. Another one may go to Calvary. But you'll present those things that are in the Bible maybe from a different perspective. So I'm not sure who it was that came up with this, but I read this. There are over 30,000 promises in the Bible. Wow. Now, depending on who you read, there might be 40,000. Or there might be 25. I know that sometimes they'll read one promise uh, that's connected to two others and they'll put in one or they'll make them all three different. I'm not trying to give you an accuracy of how many promises there are in the Bible. I'm telling you that every promise in God's Word is a promise from God. Amen. And will not fail. Amen. The Word of God for you and I and for the joy of this life stands on the promises of God. Amen. And they cannot and will not come short in anything that God declares. Amen. Not one of them will pass away. The promises incorporate so many things that are in question today. Listen to me, folks. You cannot believe God's Word 
and question God's promises that are in that word. Amen? So what do you think about miracles? I believe in them. I think I told you this some years ago. I was in college. In college you get exposed to a lot of stuff. Some of them encourages your faith. Some of it challenges your faith. But I was reading in one of my classes, don't even remember which one, uh, one of the books that the, the professor required that we read, and it was of the theologian of not of our persuasion. And he said, the miracles just need explanation. For you and I both know that these type of, quote, supernatural activities are not commonplace. Well, I agreed with that. They are not commonplace. But he said, let me give you an illustration. He said, we all know that Israel came out of Egypt. And when they had their back to the Red Sea, God, by his hand and mighty breath from heaven, parted the Red Sea and Israel passed over on dry ground. Now, there's two major miracles in the Old Testament that people want to attack. That's one of them. The other one's the, the fish that swallowed Jonah, but we haven't got time to do that. And this guy said, no problem. Because there's another sea generally in that area, and it's called the Reed Sea. The Red Sea is a large body of water deep in its depths, and God parted it. That's what the Bible says. But since in the Hebrew there are no vowels, read C and read C, read the same. And the read C, which would be easy for God to do this, you ever think God takes the easy way? But they could have walked over the read C, but now remember it said on dry ground, they could have went right through the read C, no problem, because the deepest place in the read C is 18 inches deep. Wow. I went, glory to God, what a miracle. Yep. Because God's going to drown all of Pharaoh, all of his armies, all of his horses, horses in 18 inches of water. God talks about Elijah raising a boy from the death, from death. Do you think he did it? Amen. Do you think Jesus raised Lazarus from the grave? The Bible, though God's holy word says he did those things, he did them. Amen. If you don't believe God gave men miracles in, the, in days gone by, how do you expect to have one today? When you call on the name of God. And I've had some. One of these days I'll tell you some of my miracles. I'll whet your appetite. I was born with one kidney. That's true. Documented. In Fort Worth, I had kidney stones when I was a young man several times. Very well documented. I have one kidney. I've got two now. Think about that. And I didn't get a transplant. I'll let you dwell on that one for a while. <laughs> the miracles are as true and unshakable as the Word of God. For they are part of the Word of God given for our encouragement. Amen. Move on down a little bit. The Bible says in verse 27, as the things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. When this world is shaken, when the heavens are shaken, when everything is swallowed up in the glory and the power of God, there are some things that will not be touched because they're not of this creation. They're a part of who God is. Let me show you another one. I, I like this one. The church of the most holy God shall not be shaken. Amen. Amen. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church is not an, a, a, an institution of, hum, of human placement. I lost the word there. It is an organization established by God's power, filled by God's person with God's direction. Amen. We are God's. Right. 
And by the way, the only change you and I are going to have is not your eternal standing with God. It is your earthly standing here. And He's going to change that so you are a citizen of heaven. This corruption is going to put on incorruption. This, uh, this mortality is going to put on immortality. I like that. You see, when God said when you got saved, you became part of what can't be shaken. You became part of the church. You became part of the bride. You became part of that love and grace and judgment. All those things that God is. He grafted you in to Himself. And I know we see today a lot of change, don't we? We see churches that once were there that's not there anymore. We see churches that once held a firm foundation on the Word of God that don't anymore. And we think, surely the church is being shaken. No, it's not. Because there's only one real church, folks. And God's the one that's the head of it. And He's the one that keeps the church records. Amen. Amen. And the church is not going to be, be shaken. Amen. We, we stand on a solid rock, which is Jesus Christ, that chief cornerstone. Amen. I like that too. As the church, that which makes us unshakable is God's presence, God's power. But I want to show you something else. When I think of something that's unshakable, it has to have some connection to an unshakable person or a foundation on which to stand. And I find this. If you're saved here this morning, you are a child of God, and we're going to talk about your security in just a moment because that's not shakable either. But you have something in you that came the day you got saved when the Holy Spirit moved in. And God made you His temple. He moved into you, and if God is unshakable, His temple is unshakable. I'm here to tell you tonight that this body is going to go through changes. It's already gone through so many changes. As time has, uh, uh, pa and, and time is the, is, the, is the mother of change. Uh, and as days have gone, things have changed. I watched the young preacher you're going to have come in here. Uh, I don't know if he's here Wednesday night or whenever he's here, but whenever he gets here for sure by next Sunday. I watched him uh, with all his energy. And I thought, truly I'm old. And then I thought, but I remember when I had that. I remember when I preached and walked across a pew. I remember when I jumped up and down and did all the things that I can't do anymore. I do. I remember it. And I thought, my goodness, how I've changed. And the Lord said, no, you haven't. Just in this world is all. Because I gave you something that's eternal. I gave you me. And have you ever wondered how when the, in Thessalonians chapter 4 when it says the trump of God will sound and the dead in Christ are going to get up and those that are alive are going to be called up together to ever be with the Lord? Have you ever wondered how that's going to happen? It's not going to be because your body's unshakable. Because you're going to lay this body down given time, you're going to die. So that's not unshakable. Have you ever wondered, I, I, I wondered this. How long is it going to take for God, don't even consider those that are alive. How long is it going to take God to call all your names? First off, how long is it going to take people like me, if He has me help Him do the roll call, to say your names? <laughs> I like what uh, uh, Brother Noyes told us when he came here. You say my name, just know yes. I like that. Made it easy. I've remembered your name ever since then. Noise. Amen? That's not really how I figure it because no yes doesn't make noise. Okay? But loud pipes on a motorcycle does. <laughs> you know, let me tell you what God's going to, this is my opinion because we're talking about things not shaking. God is not shaking. His throne is not shaking. His person is not shaking. And you've got Him in you. They that are dead are still sealed in Him. That's right. They that are yet to come, if they live, if there's time left for others to be saved, will at their salvation be sealed by Him. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. 
So this is just my opinion. God sits in heaven and he says this. Hey, Holy Spirit, third person of the Trinity, that one who is ministering uh, uh, the grace of God uh, uh, through Jesus Christ to those who need to be saved. It's time. It's time to stop. Come home. Come home. Everyone in the grave sealed with that unshakable power of God. God Himself. Everyone that's alive, that's got God in Him, that cannot be shaken. When He leaves, you know the Bible says, when He leaves, you leave too. When those that are dead in the ground, when God says, come on home, the Holy Spirit's going to say, here I come. Now, I don't think the Holy Spirit's in that body. But I think that body is sealed by the promise of the Holy Spirit. And those souls that are standing at the throne of God today, and the Bible says absent from the body, present with the Lord. And those souls that are standing at the throne of God today, seeing Jesus face to face, are not done with the promises of God. Because God's going to raise up that body. Can you see this? I see this out of Hollywood all the time. And they miss the mark so much. God's going to raise up the body. Bam! And that one's been waiting for that trump. He's not just waiting for, his, uh, for God to sound the trump. He's waiting for that salvation of that body that God saved by His grace. And He's going to join them back together. And He's going to call them forth by an unshakable entity who is God Himself. Let me tell you why you're saved and can't be lost. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Here's what I'd say to you. If you're saved, and God's made that so simple, Amen. know you're a sinner, know God saves sinners. Call on His name in repentance and ask God to save you, you're saved. Amen. If you meant it, God puts your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, writes your name uh, down in blood, Amen. and God doesn't have any pencil erasers. Amen? Nothing can purge that blood. Amen? Amen. If you're saved, you cannot you cannot depend upon you. Because you will not stay saved. You can depend on Him. Amen. This is the most unusual thing. I, I wish to, I, I, I'm going to illustrate it the best way I can. Stand up here, big boy. He's got on one of these really colorful shirts. Okay? And we're going to let this picture, this is, he's born again, he's saved, but he's wearing robes of righteousness. But you notice this is not white. No, it's not. It's not white. Trust me. So we're going to make this represent the life or the robes that we're wearing in this present world. We've been washed white in the blood of the Lamb. But as we walk through this world, we still make contact with sin. And it kind of gets on us. And from out here, it don't look that bad. Actually, it looks pretty good on you. But you notice there's some red goes through this. This is what happens when you sin. Eternally. I don't have anything to do it with. This doesn't stick. Those white robes that God gave you the day you got saved... They're made out of non-stickable material. When sin splashes on you, it slides right off. And slides right under the blood Amen. of Jesus Christ. So that eternally speaking, God looks at you. He doesn't see any of this. He sees, oh, I don't have on a white shirt either. He sees the white that is the righteousness of Christ, for you're in Christ. Amen? And when we as believers are walking through this world, and this does happen to us, sin gets on us. God said, you know what? What would you do when your clothes got dirty? When you were at home? 
washed them. Amen? This eternally, this, this pattern of sin is not going to stick to you. It has not stuck to you. It's under the blood, past, present, and future. But that, that sin that sticks daily, God says, why don't you deal with that? So he gives us 1 John 1, 9. That's unshakable. Amen. You can confess your sins and he will forgive them. Amen. Not maybe so, not in, in relationship to how dastardly your, your sins are. God, if you confess it as sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you in this present day, in this present robe that you're wearing in this life, this robe that represents your righteousness uh, uh, and faith as you serve God, not the eternal salvation that he gave you. That's always white. Uh, but this, this thing that's going on in you, you can clean this mess up. Amen. And that's just as sure as anything. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad it's not shakable. Amen. The blood works all the time. Every Christian should rejoice that we live in a world, though it's shaken, God is not. Though things seem to be subject to the change of time, to the change of age, to whatever it might be, it's subject, and there's always change. Man, we're living so, in so much change today, it's no wonder people say there's nothing that's stable, nothing that's firm. There is nothing to stand on. I told you once about a set of encyclopedias that I bought up somewhere in Indiana at a uh, auction, a, 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 a Mennonite auction. A set of encyclopedias that talked about uh, how that uh, they were talking about organ transplant. This is way back when we were just starting to do kidney transplants. And this encyclopedia, I think it was Britannica or World, World Encyclopedia, I don't remember what it was. But it was a whole bunch of it. And I read this. Oh, they may transplant kidneys. But they will never, ever transplant a heart. I'd like to take you uptown and introduce you to a judge I know that's got a heart. That's not his. Amen? Amen? Things change, folks. And they are changing so fast you buy a computer and before you get it hooked up, it's outdated. I can't even learn how to use it before they give me another operating system that starts me all over. <laughs> but God's not changing. His throne's not changing. His word doesn't change. His blood doesn't change. His grace doesn't change. Eternal life doesn't change. You can hold on to it. You can bet your soul on it. Amen. <clears throat> if you're here, you've never been saved then you need to come and grab a hold of something that won't change. Amen. A God who says if you'll come and ask Him to save you, He will save you and you can take it to eternity. Yeah. If you are a believer and you're stressed over the changes of the day or the changes that you can see on the horizon of tomorrow, just remember God's not changed. And that which we have depended on by faith is the same as he was the day he said, let there be light. And by the way, can I tell you this? I hope you grasp this. Isn't Genesis awesome? Amen. Let there be light. And there was light. Everything that is was spoken into existence right then. And then God spent six days getting it right where he wanted to, like the, like the potter on the wheel. He put the clay on the wheel and then he formed it the way he Amen. wanted it. So that his glory was reflected in his creation. Isn't that great? God's greatness and power is not limited to this creation as vast as it is. God is so much more than the creation. Amen. Amen. I wish I had time to talk about all that He is, such as the, angel, the angels that dwell in heaven. I don't have time. Just do not ever think that you can know or see the limit of who God is. You can't. Amen. And it never changes. And listen, that God 
that holy, mighty God on a throne that's unmovable loved you. Amen. Wow. If you've never asked God to save you, I encourage you to come and let God wash you white as snow. Come and find the God that you can say is the same today, yesterday, and forever. That I can trust, that I can lean on, for He is unchangeable. Stand with me if you would. Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come to you tonight, we thank you for who you are. Lord, I know that a lot of things are changing in our world. Uh, a lot of things are uh, different than what they used to be. Uh, but God, we know you haven't changed. We know you understand what is and what will be. All we have to do is lean on you. Thank you, Lord, that you don't change at all. Your grace, your mercy, your love, your judgment, still as it always has been. And one day throughout all of eternity, we will be able to dwell with you in that same person that does not change. We ourselves, when we enter into heaven in those white robes, washed white in the blood, will never, ever, ever, ever again see any change. Thank you, Lord, for such grace. Bless tonight, Lord, as we offer this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen.